So here's the problem. Whenever I buy new tools, they kind of just live on my workbench or on a flat surface until I figure out a home for it. Now, if it's a tool that I'm gonna use often, I kind of want to put it somewhere where I could easily reach it. But if it's something I use less, it's going to be kind of harder to reach. And if I don't use it that often at all, I'll put it stored away somewhere in like a drawer or a tool cabinet. And today we are going to find a home for these new Bessie clamps that I got. And Bessie clamps I actually use quite often. So I wanna put it somewhere close by. So I may have to reevaluate what's going on in my shop to find a new home. So because these clamps are used with this particular workbench called the Festool MFT3 table, they go into these dog holes. I want to keep the clamps nearby. I already do have these clamps here. So the best spot I believe is right next to these other clamps. It'll look nice sitting in the same spot. And honestly, this impact driver, I really never use. So it can kind of go away. And this glue gun, I do love and I use quite a bit, but I never really use it up in the workshop. I kind of use it in other places in the house. So I think this might go downstairs in my basement. So I'm gonna make something here that can hold these clamps. To design this holder, I had an idea to basically have it so that it slides in and hooks on by holding onto these bottom lip here. And they would stack next to each other to save room. And for this clamp, we're going to basically do the same thing and use this clamp part to hold it like that. So let's sketch it out, take some measurements and see what we come up with. So the holder we're gonna make is going to be 3D printed. So we're gonna design that in Fusion 360. So let's go down into the cave. I first start off with a 2D drawing of how I want the profile to be. So here are all the measurements for the individual chambers to hold each clamp. And then what you do is extrude that sketch out to a three-dimensional object. And as you can see, it's a very simple design. It's actually quite tall or deep in this case. Of course, I also modeled in some holes where I could screw this into my shelf. And this design is designed specifically for 3D printing in mind, so it's going to be easily printable with no supports. So the first thing I do is I actually print a sample, not the whole thing, just a tiny little section of it so that I can actually make sure all my measurements and everything fits correctly before I have to spend all this plastic and time waiting for the print and to find out it's wrong. So these test prints are really important to just make sure all the fit is right. It is super satisfying when all your measurements are right and you don't have to make any changes and you just go right for the big print. If you guys are coming across my account for the first time, thank you for watching this video. You're gonna see more about woodworking, 3D printing, and making. And for all of you guys who've been following me, I wanna just say I'm so sorry that I've been MIA for the last two years on YouTube. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've been posting almost daily. Short form content has something that I've really fallen in love with. I really love it, it's fun. But I really think that I should come back to long form share the projects that I'm making, but go into detail of the build process, the hardships, the failures, all those things that really make a build interesting. And a lot of it is about the process of building than really about what the final outcome is. And I think there's lots to share and I hope you guys will follow and watch it. So that's the whole process from start to finish. I'm really stoked with the way this came out. The print took about eight hours on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and this is really just my whole process of start to finish, and I hope this helps you guys. But there is a really cool part of the design that I didn't intend for it to happen, but it worked out pretty well, so let me show you. So originally this was only designed to hold four of these clamps, but because it's so long in the back, if I actually brought this one down and put it in like this, it gives you enough room to put another clamp here. So I can potentially hold another four clamps with the same design. Another thing before you guys go, if you like this, holder and you have these clamps and you want to make it for yourself, the files are available for free. Link below to Maker World and Printables where you get it. See ya!